Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here on this very cold day, but not to worry, I'm leaving the heater on to spread across the entire room to keep itself warm. And I'm keeping myself warm wearing my jacket. <laughs> and now I have a new haircut to join by. I even got a brand new cap from Chapman. Yeah, it's black. But I also have gotten some brand new titles on physical media. Yeah, for both 4K and Blu-ray, just eight titles uh, at Target. Meanwhile, I went to see a brand new movie this week, and I'm ready to review it. It's based on the popular PlayStation video games. Um, that's from game developer Naughty Dog. It's basically an Indiana Jones type of uh, treasure hunting uh, action adventure, simply called... Uncharted. It's a story about fortune hunters who who's on a journey uh, to, to go race against uh, this corrupt billionaire and his mercenary to find hidden treasure that's somewhere in the Magellan expedition. Yeah, this time we got Tom Holland, as you may know from the Spider-Man movies, you know, Peter Parker. <laughs> as we speak, and I know he's been in some other films to join by, you know, he's a British actor, and he's not to be confused with the director of Child's Play and <laughs> Fright Night, so keep that in mind, I know I've been seeing that many times already, just, just to avoid confusions. And Mark Wahlberg, yes, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, but don't worry, Mark Wahlberg's a great actor on his own, you know, he's been in some great movies like the Fighter. He was also in Free Kings, The Departed, and I know he's been in other movies in recent years or any other year. Like he was in The Gambler, Contraband, um, Lone Soldier, any other film that he's been doing in his entire career. He was also in Ted, the comedy. Uh, along with the sequel, <laughs> with Seth uh, McFarlane, <laughs> so as you know. So he's also joining in with Antonio Banderas, who plays the villain in the movie. Um, and they got some new actors to join by, like Sophia Ali from Grey's Anatomy, and, and Tati Gabrielle from The 100 that was on CW, but then she went on to do that show called the Chilean Adventures of Sabrina, that's from Netflix. Yeah. Now, this movie wasn't fully development, uh, dating back to 2008, I mean, after the popularities of their games. So, I guess I'm not going to say much because I never played them. But uh, they were going to get David O. Russell to direct this, hard to believe, because he did work with Mark Wahlberg with The Fighter. So that'll be the case. But he went on to direct the movie Silver Linings Playbook. We all know how that turned out because that was a. Apparently, it was one of the biggest movies to. To be nominated for Oscars. I mean, it gave Jennifer Lawrence an, an Oscar. And then they were going to get other directors like Neil Berger, Seth Gordon, even Sean Levy, too, and Dan Trattenberg. Travis Knight, too. Yes, Travis Knight, uh, who, as you may know, had directed Cuba and the Two Strings and Bumblebee. So they went ahead with Ruben Fletcher, the director of the Zombieland movies, and Venom. I still need to check out the second movie, though. You know, there will be Carnage. I know it's on Blu-ray and 4K and DVD, digital, so... I mean, and there's like so many movies going around, and I know it's hard to keep up, especially the way the pandemic's been affecting it, and in fact, I, I never have time to go out to see a movie these days, and it's pissing me off. And speaking of which, um, I did want to see this movie, you wouldn't believe this, but I saw this at the Academy 6 in Pasadena, California, which is operated by Regency Feeders, I mentioned this before. When I went to see uh, movies like uh, Raya and the, and the Last Dragon, I've yet to pick that up uh, pretty soon on physical media. 
and I know I went to see A Christmas Carol. I've seen other movies there too when it was second run at discount prices. Yeah, they were they used to cost like like two dollars uh, for the matinee and, and three dollars for the uh, the evenings, or sometimes it was I think it was like one fifty, and then later they changed it to to two and all. But they've been changing a lot of prices. But for some reason, uh, starting in January, uh, they decided to go first run because I guess Pasadena has been struggling pretty hard, especially uh, the announcement of of the closing of the the Lambley Playhouse 7. Yeah, that's the theater I went to go see Cowboy Bebop the movie. That they might close the theater down because they're going to turn it into an apartment complex or so. Or, or another office building. I mean, they always do this. I hope that's not going to be the case because maybe they'll try to fight harder to keep that theater in. And besides, it's an independent theater where they play art house cinema. And there's not that many feeders these days that that plays uh, art house movies, so they really need to start keeping up with that. Yeah, because I know we just got one in Glendale, which is the five screen feeder right next to where the Alex feeder is at. So we don't have that many as as we speak, but hopefully we'll get plenty. But I also hope that Pasadena will reopen the what used to be the Arc Light and Pacific Feeders. I mean, maybe Regal might take over it, or possibly Cinemark or AMC. I don't know why they haven't done that yet, but I hope they do. Because it's, it's really getting annoying that they, they had a long wait from there. And since they did have the other feeder, the IPIC feeder, which is the one where you have to dine in, and you had to pay like full prices, but I think they lowered it down a bit. Yeah, it's the ones where you had to sit inside this uh, this very comfortable recliner seats, and then you had to place an order. Yeah, the the waiter or waitress will come by and they'll they'll send you your food while you're watching a movie. Yeah, those places. Uh, we have one like that in Glendale too, um, which I know it it used to be the the man exchange uh, eight or ten feeders but they now uh, change it to well first it was MGM not MGM uh, MGN uh, five star cinema but then they changed its name to studio movie grill and now it became simply look cinema because they were going through uh, bankruptcy problems and yeah especially with the pandemic affecting it they were struggling so hard to keep this feeder open so they have to have another uh, feeder operator to take over. That's what they did. And so far, it's doing great. Uh, but I haven't been there uh, since they closed down the exchange, as we know it. Uh, maybe someday I will, but if if all else uh, is better in the world, who knows? Um, but it might cost a little more. But I think they might have deals that are cheaper. But anyway, I saw the movie over there at the Academy Six, um, and and it costs five fifty for matinee and seven fifty for evening shows. So now they get to finally play movies that they've been waiting for, and it, it's just strange that I'm seeing all these first run movies being played over there when they usually play you know the movies that would play at at other regular feeders, considering how old these feeders are, you know. The, this feeder came out like way back for centuries, but then as years have gone by, you know, they've been doing a lot of remodeling, and they, and by the 80s, they, they strip it down to become from a single screen feeder to simply six screens. So, so two of them were, were large, but the remaining four are quite small, not too small, but just as small as it could be. It's a, it could be a little bit bigger. And they have all these seats. I mean, sometimes it gets uncomfortable, but then at times it could be comfortable as long as you sit in the right position. So anyway. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a nice feeder to go to. I mean, if you want to catch on a show for a lot cheaper, instead of playing all these regular prices at other feeders, which are better, 
to be exact, and that's the case. <laughs> uh, I guess it's better than nothing. But on occasions like this, I'll still be able to see movies at, at regular feeders, you know, no matter how much it costs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let, let's begin with the review because I don't want to take too long. It stars Tom Holland, Mark Wahlberg, Antonio Banderas, who I know he's been in a lot of uh, great movies. You know, he was in, you know, The Desperado, along with um, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Uh, he was in Assassins. He was also in the, the Mask of Zorro. I just got the 4K recently with the Blu-ray at uh, Big Lots for only three bucks. Can you believe that? Three bucks for the 4K? That was so rare. <laughs> but I'm glad to have that. Uh, he did the sequel too. Uh, along with many other films he's done, you know, like Puts in Boots, for Shrek 2, as well as the third and fourth, and, and of course the movie. Sophia Ali, Tati Gabrielle, Rudy uh, Panko, Manuel de Biaz, Stephen Waddington, Elena Bolden, Nolan North, who has done some voice acting for video games and other stuff. I think also uh, animated series of any kind. And uh, Pilou is back. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but here you go. It's written by Raph Lee Jukins, Art McCum, John Hanley Rosenberg, Mark D. Walker, and Matt Holloway, you know, based on the video game of the same name by Naughty Dog, the video developer. And it's directed by Ruben Fletcher, of course, gave us the Zombieland movies and the Venom movies. The movie begins where we meet a young fortune hunter named Nathan Drake. Nicknamed Nate, who's played by Tom Holland, who's a very smart, clever, very flexible uh, type of hunter who's also like a master thief in a way because he's going around, you know, pickpocketing the many wealthy patrons and he also works as a bartender. <laughs> he pretty much knows all the ropes here and there and he just steals all the jewelry around many people to. And he has his own home, so he even goes inside <laughs> his hotel and just to unlock the mystery here and there. But taking place um, back 15 years earlier, he has an older brother named Sam. We're about to steal their very first treasure map that was made after the Magellan expedition, but they're being caught by the museum security. So, of course, they had stayed at the orphanage, which then they kicked Sam out, so now he's on his own. But before he left, Sam promised his return to Nate by leaving him a ring with an inscription that says, Sick Parvis Magna. And then since then, as the years go by, he's been sending a lot of postcards to him, hoping that he'll make his return, or in some cases, he'll be able to find him. Which that leads to his mentor, a fortune hunter named Victor Sully Sullivan, played by Mark Wolbert, who has been working with Sam tracking down the hidden treasure by the Magellan crew, and explains that Sam is banished after helping him steal the Juan Sebastian El Canto diary. So, at this rate, uh, both Sully and Nathan have worked together to go to an auction to steal the Golden Cross that's linked to the Magellan crew and that's where we meet this corrupt billionaire named Santiago Macanda who's played by Antonio Banderas, yeah he's the villain of the story he was the last descent of the Macanda family who funded the Magellan expedition who's joined in with his mercenaries including the leader Joe Braddock who's played by uh, Tati Gabriel. So, hired by him, Nathan, Nate has been ambushed by his man, uh, by her man, and is sure in a fight that creates a distraction 
or Sully to steal the cross, which they're placing a the bid on. <laughs> yeah, because that led to you know him trying to you know put on the earpiece and chewing out some bubble gum and he's trying to cut out the, the electricity and everything before he got caught. You know, by all all the other guys and. He's like running around, he's getting kicked and beat up, and then he flies around onto the ceiling with all the, the chandelier lightings around. <laughs> Pretty funny and clever. So at that point on, they finally got the cross, and the duo had traveled to Barcelona, where it's supposedly hidden. And that's where they made contact with Sully's um, female partner, uh, Chloe Fraser, who's played by... Sophia Ali, who has another cross, but Chloe eventually steals the first cross, you know, from Nate. And Nathan and Sully had convinced her to work with them. You know, they had this chase around throughout the entire um, city of Barcelona. Yeah, even the uh, the, <laughs> the fountain scene here and there. <laughs> so meanwhile, Makata had learns that his father. Armando that the family fortune is about to be donated so he orders uh, Braddock to kill him so that means he'll be able to inherit the money you know for the power that he's gonna go for and this is where Nathan, Chloe and Zoe decided to follow all the clues to where O'Connell's dollar is sent directly to Santa Maria de Pi, Del Pi that finds a, a very secret crypt that's behind the altar all the way around and Nathan, both Nate and Chloe had entered around you know they had to use the cross to open the gates here and there and of course they got caught and suddenly the the water from the fountain starts to appear and they got stuck and then they had to go to other secret lanes with all these other traps coming around. Yeah, this is like another Indiana Jones uh, type of story here. And then by the time we lead to that, there's going to be a double cross happening. And there's then there's going to be a lot of cliches happening too. And all these other predictability. Which means that now, one of them will probably end up uh, stealing the cross. So they'll be able to get the treasure on their own. Without any help of both you know, Nate and Sully. And I know that's how they're going to start going for the action because now uh, Santiago joining in with uh, with Joe are about to go on the uh, the cargo plane to head it off uh, directly to um, to the Magellan expedition. You know, somewhere where what led to this would be in the beach where. At this rate, we're going to be able to spot some pirate ships and all this other stuff included. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's a bit of a dead giveaway here. But I'm just going to keep it that way. And then there's going to be some more action happening on its way. I mean, especially the scene with the cargo plane where all these other cargoes are, are flying off. It's like a sky a diving scene as we speak. I mean, yes, there's even the this beautiful... Uh, precious car driving by. I'm starting to remind me of that scene in Terminal Velocity, if you remember that movie, if anybody does remember. It's the Charlie Sheen, uh, Tasha Kinski uh, spy thriller, uh, which I know he was, Charlie Sheen is, is like a skydiving expert. You know, he's the instructor who's about to help out all skydivers, and then that's kind of what lead to the action when he found out that this uh, student of his uh, turned out to be a spy or a COVID agent for that matter so this so she pretty much faked her death at this point okay okay well we get that idea but I, I saw that similarity scene and I thought wow this is gonna be like that and this actually happened during the flashback scene and then there's some more action going around especially when they're trying to find the treasure and then there's gonna be a lot of you know, a lot of guys and crews here and there just ready to chase after Sully and, and Nate and then of course the double cross of 
of Chloe, so now she's going to be in for the action, so this is going to lead to this. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that, um, but that's exactly what the film's about, and it's a good popcorn flick that's worth checking out, I mean, even if you haven't played the video games. But for those who are fans of the video games, I mean, I'm sure they're going to be disappointed because the story has changed us many times here and there. And I had a feeling this had been rewritten, mostly for the uh, the starring vehicle of Tom Holland, as opposed to um, which Mark Wahlberg, of course, was originally signed in mostly for the director David O. Russell, before all the other directors had been replaced. Uh, but performance-wise, I thought Tom Holland did a great job, at least for him, that he, he managed to bring in his skill. I mean, yes, there are people who may think he's miscast, but not me. I think he he nailed the role as, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe they could have had another actor to play the part, but I'll take Tom Holland over any other actor these days. But it could have been, like, maybe another actor who's probably you know a lot older than he is but that's what I thought I find it funny though because there's actually a fan film that had Nathan Fillion to play the part and I think he would have been perfect if they had used him for the movie version and in fact maybe that could have been the role I'd be surprised if he was gonna play Sully in that one so but then I think that would have been cool if he played Nathan <laughs> Or Nate is a nickname that is. Uh, Mark Wolver did great too. Uh, I thought together they had some nice chemistry. You know, it's like they they worked together as a team. Even though you know he was trying to track down his brother, hopefully things will be alright. But that's kind of what led to the twists and turns and sequence around. Um, Antonio Banderas, you know, given enough screen time as the villain, he did perfect. You know, for his role, but I do wish he had. Uh, I wish he had uh, plenty of more scenes throughout the climax, and maybe that could have helped save the film. As for Sophia Ali, she's beautiful, fantastic. You know, as another fortune hunter who happened to be the love interest of both Nate and Sully, but it kind of leads to the fact that you know she's gonna outsmart both of them. But well. <laughs> That's going to be tough because at this point on, you know how that's going to turn on for the expedition. <laughs> but, of course, the chase scene in the movie, you know, between Nate and, and uh, Chloe was just <laughs> very funny. Um, and I, I know there was that scene in the movie, too, when, uh, when they are trying to get into this uh, bar which turned out to be a dance club. Apparently, since he is a bartender himself, I mean, he's like mixing all the drinks while being chased down by all these bad guys, including that scoutsman who doesn't know what the hell he's saying, <laughs> but that's what, what makes it so funny because he's always going around, chasing him around. <laughs> yeah. As for the mercenary uh, that's played by Tati Gabriel, well, as strong as she could be, flexible, and she does have a knife where she can stab and slash uh, their necks around. See, this is PG-13, by the way, so not much blood to be settled here. I mean, there's there's a little bit of blood here and there, even for all these other action scenes. Even the climax, you know, when they're swinging around on these ships. Um, yeah, I mean... Even crushing bones here and there. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I kind of thought she was pretty weak. I mean, I, I felt like you know she could have had fully character development as written, but maybe that's exactly what the script provided. You know, not giving her a chance, but hey, she just did what she could. But I just felt like she totally upstaged Antonio Banderas and. Just so she can pretty much take the action throughout the entire running time. Yeah. 
But there's a lot of funny moments here and there. Um, it's very classy for a lot of memorable dialogue here and there and all this other obstacles that they have to go through. Um, it's very well done how they did it too with the traps and all. And how they connect within one the one stage to another. Well, I, there is a post credit scene, but I don't want to give away too much, but I know there's a bit of uh, that one cat which apparently he nicknamed Mr. Riskers. <laughs> oh, that was pretty clever. I like that bit. But other than that, though, um, it could have been better. Maybe perhaps if they provided a better screenplay for what they were given. I'm seeing how many writers they chose. But it does have a great direction by Ruben Fletcher, so he knows what he's doing. I think the film would have been provided exactly what it accomplished from the video game adaptations that they had to offer. I know it's not the best or the worst, but they got it there, and that's all we matter. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, things will turn out when they do a sequel, if there is going to be a sequel, since it's already becoming a hit so far. I think uh, we'll be able to see more of uh, Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg reprising their roles. Maybe they'll team up with someone. Maybe they'll get to their next expedition of treasure hunting. And maybe they might have a new villain to join in, maybe even better. <laughs> Who knows? So We'll see. So anyway, that's Uncharted, and I give the film three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.